All right, in this video, all right, in this video, I want to talk about uh, molarity, which is represented by a big M as opposed to a little m. And really, you want to avoid this as much as you can because the little m uh, means meters, and the big M means molarity. So we're talking about molarity, not meters. So make sure you use a capitalized uh, M with that. Uh, anyway, molarity is just a means. Uh, let me write it out here. Molarity. Molarity is just a means to express, um, a, a means or a way to express the concentration of a solution. So it's a means to express or a way a means a, a means or a way to express a concentration tration of a solution and what I mean by solution is let's say we have like a, I don't know like a glass of of water here. Let's say I've got a glass here, you know, just a regular table glass, and inside it I've got some water. You know, well, let me draw that a little bit better here. I've got some water inside it, and let's say I'm going to um, add some salt to it. These little triangle things here are salt. And this is sodium chloride. We'll call that regular table salt. Sodium chloride uh, salt. Still getting used to this pin. Salt. And we'll call this, you know, uh, water, H2O, just regular H2O over here, water, which is water. All right, um, so we're going to add the sodium chloride uh, to the, um, just straight into the water. And so that's going to be a solution. It's going to be a salt water solution, right? We've all heard of that before. Maybe you've had a sore throat and you've gargled with salt water or, you know, or just whatever. Um, so that's a solution. It's, and a solution is when you have a solute, solute, which is generally uh, your solid, but not necessarily uh, always a solid. And you have your solvent, which is generally a liquid, but not always a liquid. Um, I guess a, a good example of this would be oxygen, you know, air. Uh, oxygen would be uh, a, a, a solute in that example, and nitrogen would be a solvent. Uh, nitrogen is... Um, is going into uh, you know to the the air mixture. So air would be uh, the mixture. Let me write that in a different color here. So air would be the mixture. Uh, oxygen. Let me write that better. O2. O2 would be the solute. And nitrogen, N2, would be the solvent. So both these are gas. They're in their gaseous form. Um, so neither one is a solid, neither one's a liquid. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be, a uh, solid doesn't always have to be a solid or a liquid, but in a lot of cases it is, like in the case with salt and water here. Um, and maybe I'll do a whole video about uh, solutions and solubility and things like that. Um, but for now, I just wanted to illustrate this point here with salt and water. Uh, and the, the point is, is, is you have a solute and a, and a solvent that come together, and that forms a solution, a solution, and your solution is what, and the, the level of the solution, or the gradient of the solution, or the concentration of the solution, is what molarity is all about. And that's, that, that's the means that we use to express molarity. So molarity, let me even do it in a different color here, molarity, is equal to, and we can even put labels on this. You know, let's say we've got uh, uh, salt here, and let's say we've got, oh, I don't know, two moles, two moles of salt to NaCl. 
Uh, and let's say, you know, this is maybe five liters of water. So two moles of NaCl and five liters of water, H2O, right? So the means of expressing this concentration would be the amount of moles that we're putting into the solvent, the amount of solute that we're putting into the solvent, divided by the solvent. So the amount of salt we put in here, the moles, divided by the solvent in here, the, the liters. So molarity is always equal to moles over liter. Moles of whatever solvent you're putting in to the, or solute that you're putting into the solvent. So in this case, we have two moles of NaCl and we have five liters of water. So we've got five liters of water. So we're just going to take and divide two by five and that will give us the molarity. So let's just grab a calculator here real quick. We've got two divided by five and that's 0.4. So our molarity is equal to 0.4 and that's expressed with a big M. 0.4 molar 0.4 molarity, you know, 0.4 m, something like that, or no units at all if you're putting it just as m equals uh, m equals 0.4. You wouldn't even use units at all in that case. But that's how you would express it. So the molarity of this particular concentration uh, is going to be 0.4. So <clears throat> that's kind of how you determine molarity in kind of a pictorial of uh, how it kind of works. Uh, our general formula is this molarity equals moles over liters. And what I like to do, all, what I always like to do, as soon as I get a formula like this, is I like to cross multiply it out if it has division. And I like to cross multiply it out so that I get a more mathematically friendly or pleasing formula. Uh, so this this molarity is, is over 1, or we can call it over 1, and cross multiply. So I've got 1 times my moles and liters times my molarity, so that I'm left with molarity times liters equal moles. And that's what I like to do all my problems around. I know that if I'm solving for uh, molarity, that I just divide liters by both sides, and I'm left with m equals uh, moles over liters, my original formula here. But if I'm solving for, you know, if I'm solving for, uh, let's say liters, if I want to solve for liters, I'm going to divide both sides by m. Both sides by m. So a surprising amount of people will flip-flop these whenever they don't cross multiply out the original formula to meters times, uh, or I'm sorry, molarity times liters equals moles. So they'll get molarity over moles a lot of times. So this, just cross mul multiply it out. It'll save you a lot of uh, time in the future. You can, and then once you have it cross multiplied out, molarity times liters equals moles, you can solve for whatever. It doesn't matter if your unknown is molarity, liters, or moles. You can solve for it all. Um, so I've prepared a problem over here. And we'll just work through this one real quick. If a tw if 25.5 grams of KBR is dissolved in enough water to make 1.75 liter of solution, what is the molarity? They're asking for molarity of that solution. So we know that molarity is equal to oh I don't know what happened there. Molarity is equal to moles over liters, and we can cross multiply that out even if you want to just remember this formula, molarity times liter equals moles, and then divide liter by both sides. The uh, reason I'm, go I'm telling you both, this one and this one, is because most chemistry books will have this in them, and a lot of chemistry, chemistry professors will expect you to know this. While even though this one is more mathematic, mathematically pleasing uh, to the eye even, um, they'll have you remember this one. So I'm just going to go over both and, and give you examples of why I get to both. So uh, molarity is equal to moles over, over liters, but they don't give us moles. They give us grams, right? They're trying to throw us a curveball. Um, so they're saying 
0.5 grams of potassium bromide times, and we're, so we're just going to convert this to moles because our formula is for moles, not grams, um, times for one mole of KBr, we have X amount of grams. Let's grab a periodic table here. All right, so I've got potat. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. All right, pull the periodic table back up. So we've got potassium. It's 39. All right, and then we've got uh, what else? Bromine over here, and it's 79.9. So 39 plus 79. I guess I can pull the calculator over here so you can see this. I'll do it again. 39 plus 79. 0.9 is equal to 118.9. So that's our molar mass. What was it again? I forgot. 118.9. 118.9 grams of potassium bromide there. So for every one mole of KBr, we have 118.9 grams of KBr. So that's going to give us our moles of KBr. Blank moles of KBr because grams are going to cancel out we'll be left with moles so just grab the calculator again let me grab this one right here so we've got 25.5 times 1 divided by 118.9 so that's 0.214 moles 214 moles Right, so now we just have to divide this 0.214 moles divided by our liters, which is 1.75 liters, and I'll rewrite this so you can clearly see what I'm talking about. We've got 0 0.214 moles of KBr over, and that's a lowercase r, sorry, KBr divided by liters from our form or our word problem here. 1.75 liters. That's going to be when I grab my calculator here, divided by 1.75. So that's going to equal 0.12, well, really 0.123, because we've got three significant figures, um, and that's a five there. So I'm going to round this two to a three. And I can re rewrite it in scientific notation even. I could rewrite it as 1.23 times 10 to the negative 1 uh, molarity or molar. And that's what our molarity of this uh, solution is going to be, uh, 1.23. Um, so it's not too terribly tough uh, to get this. You could even have it thrown in with some stoichiometry problems, which I'll probably be doing in the future. Uh, but anyway, hope that wasn't too confusing. Thanks for watching.